to our parishioners, worshipers, friends, viewers, those far off and those who are near, and all who join us in prayer this morning. On behalf of Bishop of Washington, Marianne Edgar Buddy, and the Dean of this great cathedral, the very Reverend Randy Hollerith, I thank you for joining us in prayer today. I am Carl Wright, the Bishop Suffragan for the Armed Forces and Federal Ministries of the Episcopal Church. It is always a privilege to pray with this cathedral community, but even more so in that this weekend, our whole nation remembers the dastardly attacks we experienced on 911. Not only do we remember, but we also grieve that horrible day and the unspeakable loss of life. So this morning, as an act of faith, let us take a moment to pray in thanksgiving to Almighty God for those we loved but see no longer and for the commemorations of 911 all over the world. You may follow these prayers in the Book of Common Prayer, page 137, or you may pray in your hearts as I pray aloud. Again, welcome. Our opening sentences of scripture today are from the burial office. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth and after my awaking he will raise me up and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, mine eyes shall behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Now let us recite together this passage from the 51st Psalm. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew in me a right spirit. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now a lesson from the prophet Isaiah to comfort those who mourn. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, 
the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Here ends the lesson. And a lesson from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also, and you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus replied, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. I have a thought for this day. In the words of Jesus, I go to prepare a place for you. As I said previously, this weekend we mark the anniversary of one of the most horrific attacks on our country, forever to be known as 911. While we cannot forget the lives lost in Pennsylvania, in the Pentagon, in the World Trade Center, we sometimes threaten to forget, or at least do not mention, the hundreds of fellow Americans, military members, medical communities, the police and fire departments, first responders, political leaders, and just plain citizens who stood in the gap and came to rescue the living and to commend the dead. We are also tempted to forget spouses, children, family members, dear friends, again hundreds who were wounded by this act of terror. But for our morning prayers today, we make a point this day to remember all whom I just mentioned and those whom we can't always remember, those who we bear in our hearts. As we recall and remember them, let us remember Jesus' powerful words to us, those words that ring out I go to prepare a place for you, the living and the dead, the victims and the accusers, the saved and the lost. Christ died for you. We thank God for sending down from heaven the one who shows us the way, who gives us hope, who helps us make sense out of the insensible and promises to be with us until the end. Always remember those words, my friends. I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may neither fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. 
and in all that we do this day, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.